Hi, I know who you are. You are either a science loving parent who could do science in their sleep, is not afraid of anything, or you're a little science shy and you're feeling completely overwhelmed when I even use the word science. And you're kind of wondering what does it actually mean anyway? And why do we have to do such a horrible thing to our children? My name is Lee Benz and I'm the home scholar. And I wanted to help you understand science and how do you teach homeschool science? I'll tell you, you can teach it the hard way or the easy way. If you love science, you can dive in with both feet. I will say if you do have a, a science lover in your home, it can be pretty important to cover the core subjects of biology, chemistry, and physics, uh, because most sciences do require a background in all of those things. Uh, but that's really if you're a, a STEM crazy parent, right? Somebody who loves science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, but for other parents, let's just say they're not so enthusiastic. And then you want to be thinking, all right, what is science? Why do I have to do it? Uh, what is the process for getting it done? You can actually encourage the love of learning, even the love of science in your children, whether science is your greatest joy or the bane of your existence. So let's talk about why. <laughs> why would you do this horrible thing of making your children learn science in high school? Well, part of it is it, it's a core subject that uh, colleges and careers expect you to have. Um, many, many careers, even those that don't require a college background, will require some rudimentary understanding of biology and uh, chemistry, the forces of nature and that sort of thing. Um, so you want to make sure that you have the sciences that are needed for your children for graduation. Um, and I know that it can feel like science is a stumbling block for some but you can get past that. And homeschoolers who don't know science have been successful getting science into their kids, uh, just like you have. So if you are, uh, if you have a child who is not sci science minded and you're not science minded either, then you might want to start with the easier sciences, biology and chemistry, and then branch out from there. Not all students get physics. It's actually pretty uncommon in high school. So I don't want you to feel like you have to do physics if your child is not science minded. But, you know, perfect planning in high school science means that your child has three years of high school science. And at least one of those includes a lab science. If you ask me my preference, I prefer when ninth graders start with biology. Um, before biology, your goal is really to teach your child to love science, believe it or not, love science. And often that means that you're doing things, uh, sciencey things that are fun for them, um, kits in a box, that sort of thing, just to make it exciting so that the first time they see a, a science textbook in ninth grade, they say, oh, oh, that looks like fun. I love science, you know, uh, fake it till you make it, baby. Right. So you start off with uh, biology in ninth grade because biology has no prerequisites. Uh, it doesn't require you to have a lot of math. You don't have to have general science or physical science. So you can just jump right in. When you get into high school sciences, though, the thing you want to always remember is your job is not to teach them something that you don't know. Your job is to facilitate their learning so that they learn it with or without your help. <laughs> okay. Now, um, you then become the project manager of making sure they know it. Now, you might think, if you know me at all, you know that I'm an RN. Okay, so I'm a registered nurse, it's true. And, and so I do like math and science. I, I truly love biology, to be honest, um, which is why I'm a nurse. <laughs> but you might think that I was good at all sciences, and I really wasn't. I was completely in over my head with physics. I remember the first time we saw physics when my kids were in 
uh, middle school and they were doing middle school physics and I didn't understand any of it. I, I was reduced to tears, right? Everybody feels like they get in over their head at a certain point. So let me kind of explain what, uh, what it looks like to facilitate. What does it look like when you're in over your head with science or math or whatever? Um, when you have a hard high school subject, these textbooks that you buy, they come with the answers, okay? They have a solution manual. They have an answer key. So it's not like you're teaching something and you don't even know what the answer is. You have the answer key. That's why it's different than public school. You can look at, at the answers. Now, the other thing is your children can look at the answers. So as they're reading, they might read aloud however you've determined their learning style. You encourage them to continue that in high school. And then you do their, uh, their questions, their quizzes or whatever. They can do those orally and you can read the answers from the answer key or your child could uh, do the answers on their own, correct their own work, look at their own answers. And in fact, the only time uh, when I was in over my head, the only time I ever took the answer key away was when I gave them a test. <laughs> so I give them a test, take the answer key away. And then I told them they their answers on their test had to look exactly like the answer key because if it didn't, I didn't know any better. It was going to get marked wrong. And uh, so those are good lessons for you to learn no matter what subject you're in over your head, whether that's, I don't know, Latin or biology or calculus, um, you know, use the answer key to your advantage, take it away only for the test. All right. Now, one of the biggest things that you can do to set your child up for success with science is to master the vocabulary. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of research on vocabulary and learning. And, and the research says that 80% of knowing a subject is simply knowing the vocabulary. A and I can attest that that's true. In my job as a nurse, man, it's all about memorizing these things. And, um, and even my job now as an online parent educator, I think about all of the uh, unique words about online learning. And if I didn't know what a, a CPU was or a, a PDF was, then I wouldn't know my job, right? So mastering vocabulary is an important skill for life. <laughs> yes, it's important for science. You want to teach your children study skills, right? But one of the major ways we teach study skills is teaching our children the importance of vocabulary. So don't hesitate when you feel like, oh, this science curriculum, it requires so much memorization. You've wanted a curriculum to teach your kids study skills, and this is what it is, right? So you want to think about those vocabulary words. Uh, incorporate them into your morning meeting with your children. So each day you go over their vocabulary words for their science or whatever their more difficult subjects are. And by sheer repetition alone, if you ask them the same uh, vocabulary words and give them the same answers by the fourth or fifth day of the week, they're going to know what it is, right? So you want to grab some of those um, vocabulary lists that are provided by your curriculum and ask these vocabulary words because it can really make a big difference in not only their understanding of this science, but also their understanding of how do you get better on the job? How do you get better at any other subject? Because 80% of any subject is the vocabulary words. So let's talk for a moment about high school science labs. I know that that's something that just freaks people out all the time. Yes, generally speaking, colleges do wanna see at least one lab science. I encourage you to have a lab science for each science when you can. And, and the reason is, I believe it really solidifies the learning for each science, no matter what the topic is. When you add a little bit of hands-on whatever, everything is going to make more sense, whether that's math or, uh, you know, doing a hands-on project for literature or, or anything else. Having that online, sort of like a manipulative, right, is, is very helpful for them. 
Now you're probably wondering what a lab science is. Okay, so fortunately for us, uh, Congress has spent a gajillion dollars trying to figure it out. And the US House of Representatives Committee on Science and Technology formed a subcommittee on research and science education. And they spent gallons, gallons of your tax dollars trying to figure out what a high school science lab was. Okay. You know what they found out? They found out that they don't know because all of these schools do it completely different. And this high school uses online labs and this high school had only dissection and this one had no money from microscopes and this one did everything you could possibly imagine. They have no idea what a high school science lab is. So let me give you the, the easy synopsis in the real world of what a homeschool science lab is. Okay, you ready? It means you bought curriculum that has science material with it, and then you pretty much used it. You didn't use all of it. You used at least 50% of the labs that they told you to do. And as long as you've done that, that is going to be a, a lab. Now, when you teach a lab science, um, it's important for your children to understand that there's such a thing as a lab report. Okay, they write something about their lab science. Um, and I know that it's tempting to think that there are firm rules about what a lab report is or how many you have to have or how many labs you get overall, uh, but that's just not the case. So let me give you what I did in my homeschool. I had for each science lab that we did, I gave my children one piece of paper and I told them they needed to write a paragraph and have a graph chart or picture of what they did. Now, I actually have normal teenagers, so I had to further define what a paragraph was. And we decided that a paragraph was three to five sentences. Tell me if you've had to do that with your children. Okay. So they had to write three to five sentences, and then they had to have a chart or drawing or graph of some kind that describe what they did. Now, most of the time a science lab will say, draw a graph or chart of your results. So that's not a huge stretch. Um, for, the, for the drawings, if they did a drawing instead of a graph or a chart, I wasn't um, grading them on their ability to draw. I was kind of grading them on, did they draw and does it have a general representation to uh, what they did? Now, the next thing to think about is to choose the right science curriculum. And there's one big thing I want you to understand. If you buy science curriculum that is intended for a public school, there's a higher rate of failure. And the reason for that is a public school curriculum assumes the teacher knows science and you may not know science, even if you did know it 30 years ago, you may not know it now, okay? So you, instead, you want to buy a, a science curriculum that is intended for homeschoolers because it assumes you don't know science. It assumes your child doesn't know science. It assumes that the answer key had better be pretty good or nobody's gonna learn anything. And that's one of the reasons why I tend to recommend the science curriculum by Dr. Jay Weil. Um, yes, he and I have been friends and gone to convention for many years, you know, showing uh, the different things that we sell at homeschool conventions. But I also know that he is primarily a scientist. He cares more about the science than uh, other parts of the books. It, you know, it's not about the pretty pictures to him. Uh, he's a Christian, but it's not about the theology for him. It's about the science for him. And um, so that's why I usually will recommend that you look at books from Jay Weil. Now, both my science lover and my um, science loather did quite well with his curriculum. It is self-teaching. It's excellent college preparation. We used his biology, chemistry, and physics. Um, my one son who doesn't like science so much, he actually passed a CLEP exam and got college credits in biology from using that textbook alone. My other son is um, a scientist. He has a, a degree in STEM and he was able to use all of those textbooks to get A's through college. So 
Um, when choosing a curriculum, make sure you look at what the math requirements are. Usually, uh, chemistry requires you have already completed Algebra 1. Oftentimes with physics, uh, to be successful with physics, you have to have already completed pre-algebra. So you want to look very carefully at the math requirements in order to be successful. Now, after you've done maybe your one or two standard sciences and you don't think your child's going to be an engineer, then you can start looking outside the box. There are tons of fun sciences outside the box. You can do rock hounding. You can do animal husbandry. You can do astronomy. There's a lot of different sciences that you can choose from. One of our homeschool friends studied mushrooms year after year after year. Uh, one of my clients studied birding. Ornithology is a science year after year after year. And so you can have fun with science too. Whatever you do, make sure that you cover the core as much as you can. Make sure you have two to three um, of the standard sciences and then branch out when you can. And whenever possible, have your child view any video supplements that come with your curriculum before making your purchase. Because sometimes kids are uh, put off by uh, the way the video was produced or put off by the teacher or their accent or what they wore or the fact that there was no person, it was only a whiteboard. It's surprising what kids can be thrown off by in a video. So if you can encourage them to um, look at these uh, videos that come with the program and see if that's a good fit for them first before purchasing, then that's going to help. Now, I will say that you can get scholarships when your child is well prepared in science, technology, engineering, and math. A lot of colleges will reward that. But it's also true that those people need to be well educated across the board. If you are going into a STEM career, science, technology, engineering, and math, you also need to have plenty of English, plenty of social studies, those are things that they are looking for just as much as they're looking for the sciences. And in fact, when you do have a, a kid that is gearing up for science, it's very difficult for colleges to find somebody who can write well um, and do science well. So you want to be preparing your child for both. OK. All right. Well, I hope that that really helps you and and that you can think about why you wanted to teach science to your children. You know, it's in part because science is required for high school graduation. It's in part because science is required for college. Um, but think about this. Science is also something that will build critical thinking skills and it will demonstrate the ability to do hard work. And every employer wants somebody with a strong work ethic. And of course, science is required for STEM careers, science, technology, engineering, and math. And again, if you do have a, a STEM goal for your child, always remember to give them that broad education that they're going to need in order to get good scholarships, because it all is a total package when it comes to applying to college. They aren't um, just looking at the science. They're looking at the other things as well. Okay. Well, I hope that you found that really encouraging and that science is going to be helpful for you. I do have an ebook on uh, Amazon. If you'd like to look it up, it's Simple Science for Homeschooling High School. And so if you're still a little anxious about uh, preparing your student for high school science, that would be a great starting point. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.